was fascinated by the fact that we could actually pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and at levels of scale that were previously unimaginable. But what can you do with that carbon? Can you make usable materials out of it? What do the economics look like? And it occurred to us, the diamonds that we know and love are also made of carbon. And, and what if there was a way where we could take this carbon that's harmful and transform it into a, a beautiful, covetable form of carbon? And that's what started the whole thing. I grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey, a small suburb of New York City. Spent a lot of time riding bicycles and dirt bikes in the woods. There were entire summers where as soon as the sun was up, I was out the door and I wasn't back inside until the end of the day. That instilled a lifelong appreciation for nature and for the beauty that our planet holds. I started paying attention to the broader climate landscape and what was happening with climate change in 2017, following several hurricanes that caused widespread damage. I had friends whose lives were seriously disrupted. We organized a charity motorcycle ride for disaster relief. I think that was what lit the fuse on my whole transition into climate. Traditional lab-grown diamonds are produced with carbon that comes from fossil sources, namely methane. You cannot make a diamond in a laboratory environment using fossil carbon and be by any measure sustainable. When you're talking about diamond mining, there are environmental concerns, there are societal human rights issues. We saw that and we said we can flip that paradigm on its head. We can produce diamonds that actually drive a positive benefit for the planet for the very first time. We have committed to removing 20 metric tons of CO2 from the air for every carat of diamond that we sell. For that one carat diamond that you just bought from Ether, you've offset your own carbon footprint by 1.25 years. People sometimes think that lab-grown diamonds are not real diamonds. Uh, in fact, they have the same chemical makeup. Uh, you can take it to any jeweler on 47th Street, even the world's best gemologist can take a look at one of our diamonds and understand that it has no distinguishing characteristics that would separate it from mine diamonds. The key breakthrough in how ether produces diamonds really stems from the fact that we source our carbon from the air. Every atom of carbon that makes up every single ether diamond was previously in the air warming our planet. The first step is using direct air capture technology to remove the CO2 from the air chemically. From there, we put it into a specialized reactor with some hydrogen, with some heat, and what comes out the other end is a hydrocarbon. We take that, inject it into a CVD diamond reactor. And over the course of the next month or so, we get little cubes of raw diamond. The limitations when it comes to direct air capture, which was a big part of our aha moment, came down to the unit economics. It's very expensive to run these machines to pull the CO2 out of the air. And you know, when you look in the carbon markets today, direct air capture projects can generate $600 to $1,000 a ton for capturing that carbon and locking it underground. We can process that same CO2 and use it to generate millions of dollars worth of revenue. So now all of a sudden, the fact that running that machine may have cost $600 to pull that one ton out of the air is much more palatable. At the end of the day, the net net math works out that the carbon footprint is negative because of the way we're producing our diamonds. That means the more diamonds we produce, the cleaner our air is going to be, and that's something that we're really excited about. I'm Ryan Shearman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ether.